Hi, and welcome to The Right Stuff 2.0, Church Publishing's premier liturgy planning software for Episcopal churches. My name is Brother Kerrigan, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Right Stuff to create and customize a service leaflet for Sunday worship from scratch. Upon launching Right Stuff, you'll be brought to the home screen where you can see the various components of liturgy planning available to you in the software. Clicking on the Liturgy Plan icon will give you an opportunity to either select a liturgy plan from ones that you've already created or to create a new one from scratch. What we're going to do here is we're going to click New and we're going to see that we have a number of service templates to be able to choose from. Everything from the Eucharist to marriage and baptism, Lent and Holy Week services, occasional and ordination services, etc. I've gone ahead and set the defaults on my program to use the Holy Eucharist Rite 2, as you can see here, and to use a full text leaflet. I'm going to include BCP page numbers, and I'm also going to allow non-BCP headings. You can use the notes panel to keep notes for yourself about the liturgy you're planning, say for example if you have a guest preacher. Once I've selected my liturgy and which service leaflet length I want, if I click the Set Defaults button, that will allow the program to go ahead and automatically select this liturgy and this leaflet length every time I create a new service leaflet. I can override them if I want, but it saves me some trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and it's going to bring me to the Feast and Date screen. The Feast and Date screen allows me to select from Holy Days all the feasts, fasts, and observances in a given quarter or a given year, or to just display Sundays. By default, the program is going to go ahead and create a liturgy plan for the next unplanned Sunday for a liturgy that I don't already have in my database. In this case, it's Ordinary Time, Proper 17. I'm going to go ahead and select that and click OK it'll bring me back to my liturgy plan screen so I can see that this is the one that is selected and I'm going to click done. What happens when I select a liturgy plan in the database and click done is that it loads that liturgy plan into the interface for the right stuff. And as you'll see when I return to my home screen all of the information about my liturgy plan that's so far done is listed right here on the screen. Here you can see it's Proper 17, Holy Eucharist Rite 2. Here are the readings for that Sunday from the Revised Common Lectionary. It's chosen the Collect of the Day and a proper preface, and has even suggested some hymns for me and my music. I'm going to show you one by one how each of those works. Under the reading screen, I have an opportunity to go and make sure that the readings are the ones that I want to use for that Sunday. Particularly, the Old Testament lesson and the psalm have alternative lessons available for that day from the second track, and I'm actually going to select and use them. I'm going to select Jeremiah and Psalm 26, 1 through 8. You can preview the readings by clicking the Preview Readings button, and it will open up a window that will show you the text of the readings that you've selected for that Sunday. You can leave them open for reference, or you can close them. Also available is a right light commentary on the readings for that Sunday, and if I want to have an opportunity to review that, I simply click on the button, and it will open a window so that I can read commentary on those readings from Sunday from Michael Merriman. If I want to choose custom readings, I can easily do that. Simply click on the pencil icon next to any of the readings that are available, and it'll open a lectionary database where any approved lesson in, in the lectionary is available for your use. I'm not going to choose custom lessons for this, so I'm just going to cancel out of there, but I am going to select OK to make sure that my readings are properly selected and loaded in the interface. The collect of the day is chosen by default. You can override it with either no collect or commons and various occasion collects, Sundays and holy days, or even lesser feasts and fasts. In the preview window, you'll see the text of the Collect, and you'll even find some historical information about where the Collect originated, and perhaps even why it was selected for inclusion in the 1979 prayer book. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. A variety of proper prefaces are available for use in the Eucharistic prayer. Of course, because it's a Sunday, it's defaulted to the Lord's Day Collect, 
and in uh, occasions where you'll have a seasonal collect or a baptism, it will automatically select those as well. But you can select a different proper preface if you'd like. I'm going to choose God the Holy Spirit and select OK. Next, when I come to my music interface, the Write Stuff has an interface that already makes some suggestions for the hymns. You don't have to take them, but you can. It's at least a good starting point. For each of the five hymn sections, Communion, Entrance Hymn, Sequence, Offertory, it's made some suggestions, and it allows you also to go ahead and customize service music if you'd like to use service music. By default, no service music is selected for your use. If you want to review the hymns, you can go ahead and review them in the hymnal browser. Here are the five hymns that were recommended, and you can even listen to them if you'd like. Once you're done reviewing them, you can go back. If you want to select a different one instead, select the hymn that you'd like and click the Edit button. You can add by number. You can add by selecting a different suggestion from the list available here. Or you can go into the hymnal browser and select a different one. In this case, you can see texts and references for the hymn that's selected. Here, for example, you'll see that this hymn has references to scriptures from the Old Testament and from John, Acts, and Revelation. You'll also see that it was selected because it corresponds with the lesson. And you can read the lesson here. I'm going to go ahead and keep the God of Abram praise. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and keep all of these selections that they've chosen for hymns. I do, however, want to use an opening acclamation that's sung instead of said, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and click the Add button here, and I'm going to add from the hymnal browser. I'm going to go here and search for acclamation. Here's an opening acclamation here. Here are several, the Holy Eucharist. This is the one I want, S76. I'm going to select that. I can also decide whether or not I want to use the graphic image, the title and number that points to the hymnal, or the full text. Of course, in this case, I'm going to use the graphic image. And you'll note that now my opening acclamation music has been selected. You can walk step by step through each of the components of your service, through all the service sections. If you want sung versions of the Sursum Corda or the Sanctus, you can go ahead and include them here. And click OK. Now so far, quite a bit of work has been done in the leaflet, and I could technically go ahead and print it now. But the robust feature of Write Stuff is the Customize screen. The Customize screen gives me an opportunity to step through every section in the service and to customize it according to my use in my parish. Here's the opening acclamation. And we chose a sung version here, so we're going to go ahead and select that and make sure that the music shows up. Here we have rubrics, headings, songs of praise. We can choose which Eucharistic prayer we want to use. In order to activate a particular Eucharistic prayer or any other service section, for example, just click on the little dot in the left-hand sidebar. In this case, if I wanted to select Eucharistic Prayer D, I go ahead and select that, and it will automatically turn off Eucharistic Prayer A, which was chosen by default. For entrance rites, I can change my heading by clicking here or by selecting to have no heading at all. It's entirely up to me. In this case, I'm going to call it the entrance of the ministers. And click OK. So in this interface, I can customize any element of my service. And I'm going to show you an example. First of all, when you see this little blue gear right next to any of the sections in your service outline, 
that means that some element of that section has been customized. So it's a good way for you to keep track of how many customizations you've got in your service. Here is a rubric. I can walk through the options here and select something different and it'll automatically update in my preview window here. The wonderful thing about Write Stuff 2.0 is, is that there's also inline editing available. Say for example, I don't like to use the word celebrant, I like to use the word presider. So I'm going to select that here and I'm going to change it. Because Write Stuff 2.0 is smart, it knows that any time the word celebrant appears by itself somewhere in the leaflet that I would prefer to use the word presider, and it will go ahead and change that in a variety of different places. You can see how that works over here. Suddenly my section for the piece has been changed, and if I go and select that, I'll see that that's because the word celebrant has been changed to presider. And it's done the same thing in my Eucharistic prayer. I can customize rubrics to my heart's content. I can change headings. I can walk through and make sure that my readings display the way I want them to, that the declaration for those readings is proper, if I want to call it a reading or a lesson, or simply have no declaration at all. I can choose which reading ending I'd like to use. In this case, the word of the Lord, or here ends the reading, or hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I can select from any available option, and if an option isn't there, I can simply select and type in a customized text. You'll also notice that copyright notices for any of the music that you're using in your leaflet automatically appear in the copyright notices section. If I'm going to use customized music, I can even select this and enter copyright information by hand for those pieces that I'm using that are not in the authorized hymnals of the church. The Right Light Commentary that I looked at earlier is also available by default, and I can choose whether to include it or to not include it. You'll notice that some of the elements in the Right Stuff service section have arrows, up and down arrows. What that means is that this section is draggable to a different location. So say, for example, with the Announcements section, if I wanted to put that in a different place, I could simply drag it to wherever it is that I want to use it, and we're good to go. I do prefer to keep it right here. I can choose whether or not to use the confession, walk through whatever uh, edits that I'd like to make, or if I don't want to use it, I can click the little button and I can disable that altogether so I don't need to use it. Prayers of the People is a really robust interface as well. I can select which prayer form I want. Let's go ahead and choose prayer form 5. Once I click that and prayer form 5 is highlighted, I can click to edit. And this will open up a text editor that I can use to go ahead and customize the text that I want to use. For example, Catherine, our presiding bishop. don't want that to be italicized. And my bishop's name is Mark. Select OK, and you'll see that my text has now been customized. Click Apply, and click Done. There are any number of available opportunities for me to customize my liturgy here, and I can walk through as many as I want or as few as I want. I can create a cover by dragging an additional material block up to the top, and you can see that demonstrated in another one of our videos in the video library. But once I'm done, and all my customizations have been made, I select the style sheet that I want to use for my bulletin. Now I can use a whole sheet, priest's altar copy, I can use a legal size booklet or a letter size booklet and I have a variety of different font sizes, fonts that are available to me. 
say for example I want to choose a letter size booklet in times this will give me a preview of what that text will look like on the page or a legal size booklet go ahead and click OK and now you have an opportunity to preview your liturgy from start to finish to make sure that the music that you've selected is available to make sure that you've chosen all of the right options that your rubrics and your headings are correct you can step up through the entire service under the preview liturgy screen to make sure that it's all the way you want it to be once you've verified that it is exactly how you want it go to the export liturgy screen ex export leaflet there are a variety of export formats available. A doc format, of course, will open in a word processor and give you the opportunity to edit things after export if you'd like. A PDF will just export a simple PDF version of the document. And an HTML will actually export an HTML web page of your leaflet that you could post on your website. PDF options allows you to create a front page and a back page in PDF and go ahead and upload them into the system so that they'll be used week after week. You can also include a priest's altar copy in large print and make sure to export your copyright permissions forms so that any music that you use in your leaflet for that Sunday you can secure appropriate permissions to print them. I'm going to select doc and export my leaflet. Write Stuff will then prompt me and ask me where I'd like to save it. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's going to save as a zip file, and I'll show you how that works. Here's my zip file right here. I'm going to double click that, and it's going to open up for me a folder, and inside will be my exported leaflet. Here will be my copyright permission forms. Any music images that I'd like to use uh, for the music that was included in my leaflet. And here are texts of all of the hymns in case I want to use them for anything as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the exported document in my word processor. And here you'll see my fully customized leaflet. One of the wonderful things about Write Stuff 2.0 is, is that the music is broken across music systems so that it flows across page breaks very easily. This way I don't need to worry about manipulating the music images after the fact to get them to, to roll across page boundaries and not leave a lot of white space in my bulletin. So here's my leaflet and it looks pretty much ready to go. I use a utility on my Mac that's called Create Booklet. That gives me an opportunity to go ahead and put this into a paginated booklet format so that I can use that uh, to print out my final version. One of the things you want to make sure, of course, is, is that your page setup is correct for the size that you want to use. There's my leaflet. You'll see that it's 7 by 8.5 inches, which is a letter size booklet. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that is correct. And you'll see here that my booklet is all ready to go. So I'll choose Create Booklet. And here, better than the first time around, is my complete paginated leaflet ready for me to go ahead and print. So that is how to create a bulletin and customize it using the right stuff. Write Stuff is robust and flexible. It gives you ample opportunity to edit your leaflet before you export. And then once you're done, creating a bulletin and a booklet format is really simple.